This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. Perhaps I'm trying a little too hard with this red light, but in this video, we're gonna go back to a time when I wasn't alive, and that's the 80s, and we're gonna create an awesome 80s intro. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, this is one of those really cool tutorials that's just fun to create and there should be a lot of uses for your motion graphic and After Effects skill set. So let's go ahead and jump to the tutorial and let's get started. All right, so let's do this thing. So we already have a blank composition here. The only thing we have in here is our title. And when you have your title in here, we're gonna start working on this. So for this title, I'm using a typeface called Res. I think you just Google that. I actually do not know how I got that typeface, but I have it. So what we're gonna do here is once you have your title all done, what you wanna do is go to Layer, Pre-Compose. And this also could be like your logo as well. So you just really wanna call this a placeholder. So this way you can change it out later. If you wanna change the title or put a logo in, you will, you'll be able to do that. So. With this, what we're going to do is go up to Layer, Layer Styles, and we're going to click on Gradient Overlay. We're going to open up the Gradient Overlay, and we're going to come here to the Colors and click on Edit Gradient. And what we'll do here is go come here to the first color stop, and we could do like a, you know, nice magenta color. Go to the second color stop, and we do like a dark, you know, ish blue. Cool. And then what we'll do here is click here in the middle, and we'll set this to white. And then we can move the color stop around to kind of just change where the colors are at. And simply what we're looking to do is just create this like nice gradient on our title like this. And that looks good. So when your color is set, just click OK. Then what we'll do here is grab our placeholder, go to Edit Duplicate. And we'll go to the bottom placeholder here. And we'll turn off the gradient overlay. We don't need that. Then we'll go up to Effect Perspective. And we're going to add Drop Shadow. We'll change the shadow color to white and then we'll decrease the distance to two and we'll set the opacity to 100 percent now you can change the direction of this but this is going to give us a beveled look now when we're ready what we'll do is we'll duplicate the drop shadow several times we have a sort of a 3d look here and if you just quickly want to change direction just delete all those drop shadows and just rechange the direction and just reduplicate them See, pretty easy. All right, now that we're done with our title, what we can do is pre-compose both of these layers and we'll just call it title finish. All right, awesome. And before we move on to the next step in our video, I wanna give a quick shout out to Envato Elements. You know what I dislike as a content producer? Having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage, music for my videos, After Effects templates, and graphic design templates for my business. With Envato Elements, I can save a ton of money for my business by spending only $16.50 a month where I can download unlimited music, After Effects templates, stock footage, and so much more for my business needs. If you want to learn how you can save countless time and money, be sure to check our links in the video description, which will take you over to Envato Elements. <clears throat> All right, so next up, we need to start setting up our background. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid, and we'll call it Grid. All right, so the title's done. We're moving on to our second technique, which is setting up the background. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid, and we'll call this Grid. Then we'll go to Effect, Generate, and we'll add Grid. All right, awesome. So we'll come here to the corner, and we can just you know, change these shapes to kind of just make as many squares as possible. Not as many, but just kind of be a little bit custom with this. And you can easily update how many, you know, blocks you want to have. Okay, we'll just go with that. And then we'll put this layer underneath our title. I think that's good enough. And then when you have a grid that you like, let's set the border down to say like three, make it a little bit thinner. Come here, change the color. Perhaps we'll go to like a nice light magenta type color. Click OK. And now let's go ahead and create an extra shape to this to kind of break up the background a little bit. So we'll come here, grab, say, the polygon tool. Then let's come here to the fill, set this to like a medium black, not like a complete black, but like a very dark, dark gray. And then click on the word stroke, set this to solid color, click OK. And set this color to white. And we'll use a stroke count of two. And what we'll do here is just draw out a tool like this or a shape. And then we'll come here to the polystar one here in the shape layer go to the path one and we'll set the sides or the points excuse me down to three so it'll be a triangle use any shape you want then what we we'll do here is go to the align tab which is here in the right corner and center this up if you don't see the line tab go to window align 
And then let's go ahead and put this layer underneath our title. All right, and then let's go up to Effect Stylize, and we're going to add Glow. All right, so let's set the glow colors to A and B colors, and let's change our color A to like a magenta-ish color again. So we kind of want to stay with one, you know, color palette. Maybe it's more purple, but that's okay. And then let's set the color loop into Sawtooth B greater than A. Then let's come here and increase the glow radius up to like 120. And then we'll increase the glow radius to about four. And then let's bring the glow threshold to about 40%. So it's very subtle, but what we need to do here is duplicate the glow effect. And then let's bring the glow radius down to maybe like 60. So we have something like this. Then let's go to Effect Blur and Sharpen. And we're going to add CC Radial Fast Blur. And then set the zoom to brightest. And nice. And we can increase this to 70 or something. And actually what's cool here is we can actually animate the amount. So we can have this like really high. Like this. And then we can go forward to maybe like a second or so. And bring it down to like a modest amount of like 50. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe we'll go like down to 20 on it. And you know just adding a little bit of animation from our shape. And then to finish up the background, let's go ahead and go to Layer New Solid. And let's just call it BG for background. Go to Color, and let's not make this a pure black, but just like a medium gray. Or sorry, not medium gray, but like a very dark gray. Click OK, and put this layer underneath the grid. And this will come in handy a little bit later, because this kind of, you know, smooths out the contrast of the scene by a little bit. So now we have our basic elements in here for our title and background. And I know it doesn't look like much at the moment. This looks like a very immature scene, but... With this next step, we're really going to, you know, polish this off and make it look great. So in our third step, we're going to composite our scene together and, you know, start using several effects to make this look really good. So what we'll do here is go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll rename this vignette. Then we'll go up to effect, stylize, and we're going to add CC vignette. And all we want to do here is create, create a vignette. So I might increase the amount by a little bit increase the angle of view by a touch to so have like a little vignette here and I think that's good so that kind of focuses the scene by a little bit so 221 the amount and angle of view of 59 and that looks cool then let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer and this time we'll call it uh, noise then let's go to effect noise and grain and we're gonna click on noise and let's set the noise mount to 10% with the noise in here, things are really starting to come together. Then let's create another adjustment layer. And this time we'll call it color. So let's go to effect color correction curves. Let's go ahead and bring up our RGB curve by a little bit. So this will lower the contrast of the scene. Let's bring down the highlights by a touch. And we just lowered the contrast of the scene. That's great. Let's come here to the red channel. And we can start shifting these colors a little bit. Go down on the red curve by a little bit. So we're more on that blue you know, segment there. Maybe go to the green channel. Push that in a certain direction, push it more green, then go to the blue channel and see what we got here. Maybe we'll go a little bit up on that. Cool. So just with a little bit of curves, we're able to shift the entire you know, dynamic of the scene. Then let's go to effect color correction and we're going to add hue and saturation. Let's increase the saturation of the scene by a little bit, maybe like 35. Then let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer, we'll call this glow. Then let's go to effect stylize and let's add glow. Let's set this to A and B colors again under color glows and then let's go to a color color a and we'll do like a blue color this time so since we went to like a blue palette let's do like a nice blue there cool and then let's increase the glow intensity to maybe like two and then let's increase the radius to maybe like 120 nice and see how it's kind of making our title pop a little bit just kind of diffusing it a little bit and making it pop and maybe we'll just bring up the glow threshold just by a little bit awesome all right, and with these four layers, we've been able to really turn the scene around from this to that. So it really is all about the style of the scene, and that's a huge impact of what you can do. So all we have here is just a little bit of interesting elements, and I want to be able to just, uh, you know, spruce this up by a little bit more. So this time we're going to add just like these little X's or crosses in our scene. So what we'll do here is grab the pen tool, click on the word fill, set it to none, click OK. Uh, Make sure stroke is enabled, set it to white, and we'll use a stroke count of two. Then what we'll do here is just click a point and hold down shift on keyboard and add another point. And this will give us a straight line like this. I'm actually just going to solo this layer. And then let's go ahead and open up our shape layer two. go into the contents, duplicate the shape one. So now we have two 
and we can come here and rotate it go to transform shape 2 and rotate this by 90 degrees and it's gonna be off in another world which is up here let's come here to the position and just bring this down and then let's just kind of get these on top of each other to make a cross and move it in place until we have uh, these two lines intersecting congruently and that looks perfect and we can make this a little bit thicker perhaps we'll go to like four awesome then what we'll do here is we'll just quickly animate this so we'll do is hit asteroid keyboard for scale add a keyframe for scale move forward move that keyframe forward maybe by a second set the scale down to zero percent and then of course make sure you control double click the pan behind tool so that anchor point is right in the middle and it animates from that point awesome then let's have it stay up for like you know a half a second or so add a keyframe for scale when we move forward and set the scale back down to zero percent then select all of our keyframes and make them easy easy keyframes by hitting f9 on our keyboard so now what i want to do here is duplicate this and just move it around our composition and then maybe just change the size of some of them and then duplicate it again just creating some little variations in this and i'm just creating a bunch of different copies here so now that we have 12 in here, all we have to do here is offset these in our timeline. And then once again, we can duplicate everything and then bring these to the top and just offset them completely. So now we'll just have more X's continually here and that's fine. Then we'll grab all of our layers, pre-compose them. Perfect. And then put these layers underneath our title on solo. And now we have a few X's animating in here, just to add a little bit more detail to our scene, and that's cool. And finally, for our fifth and final technique, let's go ahead and animate this. And we'll do this very easily. So let's go ahead and make our title and our triangle shape here 3D layers. Perfect. Then what we'll do here is we'll grab our title, we'll hit P on keyboard for position, we'll add a keyframe, move it forward in time, maybe to a second or so, and we'll have this title become really big like this. Awesome. Then let's grab our triangle or shape layer, hit P on keyboard for our position, add a keyframe for that, move it forward in time, and let's set this back in time, or you know, backward, boom. So that's kind of really cool. And then what's interesting is we can go to our shape layer and set the amount up to like 100% on that radial fast blur. Very cool. And then let's go ahead and expand that amount keyframe. And then of course, let's go ahead and make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. We can also come here to our grid layer and add a keyframe for the corner, move forward to our timeline and kind of just have these expanded outward. It looks like we're animating that inward. And make these keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And then lastly, let's go ahead and pre compose everything and call it all. And let's just hit S on keyboard for scale. Make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline, add a keyframe for scale, move to the end of our animation, we'll say five seconds, and we'll scale inward on it just by a little bit. And now you should have a title animation like this. And, you know, it's really cool. We have a little bit of 80s style in here and you can easily change out the titles and do what you have to do. So that wraps up this really cool tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post several post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always be creating.